Okay, so the issue wasn't any browser module or anything like that. The issue was that my stop here was not returning an observable, so I just had to call the off on it. Um, so, because we assume it returns an observable and it was crashing already there. Okay, so we're almost there with the refactoring of that component. I mean, let me show it to you, the list component template, on the other hand. So we would really like to get this one up and running in the items here as well. Um, so in order to get it to work, this items needs to be an observable with the async pipe. So that's pretty much copy paste. But it's not gonna really work. It's because um, if you notice, um, so this is a list, right? Uh, let me drag it here. So check it out. Um, we need an extra step that will actually translate an item, which is like a raw um, uh, array into something called a tree. Um, I will try to do it with the least pot possible um, friction right now, because that's how we actually do refactoring. But trust me, I'm gonna touch that bad guy real quick. All right, so the first thing is there's this whole function. I'm just gonna copy it over here um, because I'm gonna make sure I wanna touch that. So I will just make a to-do refactor so I d it doesn't slips. And then here, how can I actually run this thing? Well, if you're not doing imperative programming, you don't have access to this. All you have to do is to call pipe on it. Check it out. You do pipe, pipe, then you can use the map operator. You're done changing, uh, you just model the data, so map should be fine. And then you have items in here. If you wanna be type set, if you wanna also call the item array, just to have 100%. So technically we're not changing anything, we're just making an extra thing. Data array to three items. Cool. Um, I hope that does. Um, well, how do I know? Well, of course you should be writing tests. So let's go ahead and write tests for it. Okay, so now when I run my test, you will notice that uh, we have the two failed tests because I've added this template. So I need to make sure I um, provide those components as well. So I need the search bar component and I also need a level component, I believe it's called. Yeah, and probably the level contains a lot more. Let me have a look. Maybe I'll remove the test coverage just for now. Okay, um, but anyway, it will not work. So what I need to do is, uh, I, so uh, you see, this is like very much strict, a unit test of that component, but you know, a component doesn't consist of just a component. So let me think about it. Like a single unit of my testing here will be a component with the template and CSS. That's That's a good way to think about it. Um, okay, and now I can see we have a bit uh, more issues in here is because somewhere there is a data service also injected. That's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, it's right. <laughs> yeah, we, okay. Um, this will cause me tons of troubles actually. It's a spaghetti code. I mean, the lower layers knows about the, high, it's, it's just bad. So, you know what, for now, let me let me remove the whole um, feature of adding uh, the search bar on it. So I will go into my template and remove this one. Let's see if it's gonna help me a little bit. I hope the level component doesn't do it. Okay, it doesn't seem so. Well, the item does. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's pretty bad. So, you see, I mean, moving things around is not easy. I mean, you have a coupling everywhere. So, no, I just gotta make it better. Okay, cool. So, what do we need to do? 
um, when you look at the template of this, um, you will see that we don't need to um, check just if the observable was called. This is super basic, right? And actually, now this items don't length is pretty funny because now it turns that array into like a children thing. So because it's a single node, it's just a coincidence. It actually works. So let me show you some better cases. Okay. So one thing to do it is to make sure that we fetch some items out of it. So when you when you have a look at it, uh, the items content, I want to make sure that this is rendered, right? So what I can do is say root up level component or element. Actually, word element is better. So how do we get it? Well, you call fixture then you call you get the debug element from it and then you can query so what you can do is to do query all and then you need to say by what in this case you don't want to use the protractor you want to use the platform browser from angular and then by what by directive and what is the directive well it's uh, uh it's a level component that should do the trick okay so there is one more thing you have to do. Um, you have to call fixture detect changes. It's because you want to tell Angular, like I've actually fetched something that should be important. And then in here, I can just say expect fixture dot length to equal one because I know there is only one element, then this is not needed. Let me just have a look if it's working. I think my camera stopped to work is because of the single run, probably. Single run is false. Hmm. I will fail. Uh, it's because we don't have this app item included in our code. And I don't want to include the app item. It's because app item causes me to actually inject the data service. So what can I do? Well, there are quite a few things you can do about it. So first of all, just remove it for now and then make it better later. Or inside the item, you can just remove that functionality. So I'm going to go ahead with the second one. Uh, in the item component, I'm going to try to remove that dependency on the data service as much as possible. Here we have even mod imperative code, which is useless. Okay, it's just a presentational component that should show me the data. Uh, this is a hybrid component. Look, it has input and the services. It's uh, terrible. Uh, let me let me go ahead. Now I have to make sure I've, uh, I add this um, in my UI spec TS. I should also add the item component. So the single item. Okay, let me run this. Okay, we're still failing. Um, oh yeah, because we don't have a router. Um, I've just been there, it's pretty funny. Okay, I'll remove the router for now as well. I'm gonna mo move it back later on. All right, now we pass. Cool. Okay, so since we're passing, now we should do some refactor because this code, like, I don't like quite a few things about it. So the first thing is, imagine this. This was already quite problematic for me to include all this stuff. So let me let me make it easier. So the the very easy way is to just use a, on the smart level component, just use a module. Um, so I'm gonna call it items module. And here I'm gonna do all the stuff I need to do in order to make a module. So I'm just gonna—I know this is this is silly what I'm doing. I don't remember these things. Okay, here we go. E export class um, items module. Cool. And then what I should do is I should provide. I'm sorry. Let's uh, let's start with the declaration. So I'm gonna move it here and then just do it like this. Okay, declarations, 
and I'm gonna move all the modules I care about. So I care about the items module, items component for sure. I care about the search for now, I'm gonna skip it. Um, I care about the level component and I care about the single item component. Yeah, these modules I care about. Um, and actually, technically, I should just copy paste what I had in a task. Uh, I can just generate it out of it, so check it out. Well, uh, maybe uh, in, in, uh, without the provider, right? In, in order to get the provider to work, I should probably, well, not probably, I should definitely um, use the actual class in here. So in providers, I should provide a token, get items, and then I want to use class, and it is the item service class. And that's perfectly fine, is because we uh, we mock it right here, so it's okay to use it like that. All right. Um, so that being said, I should also include the browser module. Yep. Okay. Looks good. Um, so I have my item module. So now in my in here, I can start to get rid of the stuff. So list. Uh, well, <laughs> this is the old list. I definitely want to get rid of it. Item component, yes. Level component, yes. Items component, the one I just added, yes. Um, and that should be it. And then in here, I oh sorry, import sorry here. So all I can do is to draw items module, and we're good to go. Um, the same in a test. Actually, look 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 at the neat trick I can do. Because I already set it up right. And there is no surprise to it. All I can do is to use the items module in here. It's pretty neat. Let me run this. Let's see if there are any surprises. Yeah. Yeah, we have the surprise. Oh yeah, it's because uh, in the module, in here, I forgot to uh, because because I'm actually using the item service, not just a mock. I need to provide the uh, dependency of it, so I should really provide the HTTP client. Module. Actually, I can show you a better way to do it, uh, but not in in at the moment. For now, let's just let's just include it. No. Cool, we pass. Okay, so there are quite a few things we can still do. So first of all, we can remove the engine in it. Uh, it's because the text changes already forces the engine in it lifecycle hook. We can also remove this piece of code. Um, there is actually a glitch though. This items module, as I already showed you, uh, it's using the HTTP client module. It's not very handy because we start having the same problems. We need to have this dependency. So an ideal situation would be to have a module for my services or the infrastructure layer that would already include that or just keep it independent for now. Uh, but there's quite a few things. We also have this one pretty hard coded. So this remember this is a mock server not the real server we want to connect so there are quite a few problems we're going to tackle in the next video but uh for now i think what we need to do is um in my test here let me come back to the stab of it um you can just override it that's no problem at all so let me run this one and it should be pretty straightforward okay because I saved again. Yeah, so we're still passing. Uh, th this this is pretty important. It helps you to decouple the infrastructure layer from uh, smart components. Now you can you know spy on it nicely. I mean you could do it anyway, but at least you don't have to inject all those dependencies. It's pretty cool actually. You should always do it. <laughs> 